This is the Tour de France race bike of Team Total Energies. It's got some incredibly interesting tech. So let's take a look at this S-Works Tarmac SL7. The first thing to note about this bike is the frame set. This is the S-Works version of the SL7. Now, this bike is the one race bike in specialized range. It's been around for quite a while now, so maybe we'll see something new at this Tour de France. I don't think so. It'd probably be next year, but still, one to keep an eye on. Now, Team Total Energies aren't actually a Shimano-sponsored team, and what you're seeing here is actually the old Jura 8. Now, with that comes some interesting tech specs that we don't actually see anymore in the Peloton. First up, if we take a look down under the saddle, well, there's a Junction A box. Of course, on the new Jura Ace, that's all moved into the rear mech, but for this one, you've actually got to have it under the saddle. Now, for a pro race bike like this, I actually think that this location is much, much better than having the functionality down on the rear mech. And the primary reason for that is that if Bosenhagen or any of the team Total riders have an issue with their gears mid-stage, they don't have to stop to get them adjusted. The mechanic can simply lean out of the car window, put it into adjustment mode, and then the rider can adjust the indexing. That's so much easier than the rider having to stop the car having to stop, and then the rider having to make their way back to the bunch. That's gonna save them energy. It could win them a stage, that little bit of energy. Who knows? The second change that you'll find with the older Jura Ace is up at the front. Now, Bosenhagen here has the old style DI2 Sprinter shifter. Now, personally, I absolutely hate this Sprinter shifter. Its body is too big, the button is a bit clunky, Generally, that means that it just doesn't work that well. It also leads to a pretty large hole in the bar tape, where, as the smaller, newer version leaves a much smaller hole, it just looks a whole load cleaner, just works a whole load better. Sticking with the gears, if we move down to the rear mech, we see something that we don't actually see much of these days. Now, ceramic bearings are commonplace in the jockey wheels if a team is using a ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel system, but what we have here is ceramic pulley wheels, but they're the kind of standard size. They're quite small. So they're obviously not going for the wattage saving there, but maybe they think there's a shifting benefit to be had. I don't know. Anyway, Bosenhagen is running an 11 to 30 tooth cassette at the back, and he's pairing that with a 54-42 chain set combination. That's some pretty monstrous gearing once he wants to get going. Now, crank length is 172.5 millimeters, and then we'll make our way up towards the front of the bike where we find a 130 millimeter negative 12 degree stem. That's a serious bit of metal, let me tell you. Up at the front of the bike, we actually find a really interesting feature. And no, I'm not talking about the beautifully clean cockpit that he has going on. I wanna point out the fact that these bikes are designed to be ridden and raced day in, day out. The top headset bearing, where you can see the grease that has been used to uh, you know, pack it in, keep it weatherproof. These bikes need to be jet washed every day. They need to go through rain, hail, all the sun in the world and still come out working the other side. So these are built for functionality rather than aesthetics. So while you and I might have cleaned off that bit of grease, the poor old mechanics that are building up, well, nine of these bikes, eight of these bikes, they just need to get the job done. Moving on to the brakes now, and while most pros go for a 140 millimeter rear and match it at the front, Bosenhagen has upped his rotor size to 160 millimeters at the front. He is a slightly larger rider, so this extra braking power may come in use it may uh, just cause a few less issues when he's coming off the power with rotor warping and that annoying ting, 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 ting. A really nice touch is just how clean the piston walls are down there in the brake caliper. I have to say what I'm gonna have to do now is go and talk to the mechanics and find out just how they keep those piston walls 
so, so clean. The wheel set that we have here is the Rover Rapid CLX. This is the second version, I think. The aesthetic difference over the first dif uh, version are tiny, so it is really hard to tell the difference. Um, they are a very fast wheel set. Um, now they are tubeless as well. So these are new tubeless tires from Specialized. We don't know what they are yet. We don't know what they're called. We've seen them for months, but Specialized won't tell us anything about them. So yeah, we'll have to stay tuned uh, for details on that, though I would expect that they will be launching during the Tour de France. That's when they generally launch things. And then we get to the saddle. This is the Specialized Roman Mirror saddle. This is one of their 3D printed versions and it looks comfortable. I personally get on really well with the uh, Roman. I've never tried the mirror version, but we will definitely try to get one in on test. This one runs carbon rails and we'd expect it to be very, very light. Keep your eyes peeled for more Tour de France tech content from us. We have been to see all of the teams and got some brilliant stuff. Now, what do you think of this bike? Let us know down in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one.